Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Talib Lal from Team FMG. I hope every one of you gave your best shots in the recent FMG exams, and uh, hopefully, everyone will pass the exam. So, before starting this session, I would like to mention that uh, the language of the questions will not be exactly the same that has been asked in the exam, but still, somehow, we try to make the best recall for you guys, okay? So, starting with the question number one, which of the following adverse effect is not seen even after the year of the lithium therapy? So, guys, if you remember the side effects of the lithium therapy with the mnemonic LITH, L, I, T, T, H. L was for leukocytosis. L was for leukocytosis. I was for insipidus diabetes. Insipidus diabetes. T was for tremors. T was for tremors, which is the most common side effect of the lithium. T was teratogenic. T is teratogenic, which causes Epstein anomaly, that we say box-shaped heart. Epstein anomaly. And H was for hypothyroidism. It was for hypothyroidism. So guys, these are the side effects of the lithium. So what exactly question was, which of the following adverse effect is not? So guys, hypothyroidism is a side effect. Diabetes, insipidus is a side effect. Tremors are the side effect. So the answer for this question is a tardive dyskinesia. Now, even if you do not remember all the side effects of the lithium, but still in psychiatry or study, this is an extra pyramidal side effect of a typical antipsychotics. Okay, guys. You, you would have ruled out in this way also. The tardive dyskinesia is an extra pyramidal side effect of a typical antipsychotics and the treatment for this will be a dopamine depletors we give in this condition. Dopamine depletors such as tetrabenazine. Tetrabenazine. Okay, guys. So, in a tardive dyskinesia condition, how we can treat this patient? We will just switch the patient to the atypical antipsychotics. Along with that, we give patients the dopamine depleters such as tetrabenazine. Okay, so the answer of this question was C, tardive dyskinesia. I hope every one of you got this correct one. Then the second question was a patient of pheochromocytoma underwent a surgery. Which of the following agent is given prior to the surgery to control the intraoperative hypertension of the patient? So, guys, pheochromocytoma again, it's a PYQ. They usually ask the question from pheochromocytoma in the recent exams previous exams they used to ask the investigation of choice but right now they have asked which of the following drug is used to control the intraoperative hypertension of the patients so pheochromocytoma if you know guys it's a tumor of chromaffin cells it's a tumor of chromaffin cells adrenal medulla you can mention adrenal medulla Always three things that patient will complain of. Patient will have, have uh, palpitations, palpitations, headache, headache and sweating. So this is a classical case of a few chromocytoma. Now guys, in the treatment part, we have to remember three things. Okay. Before surgery, what kind of a drug we use? Intraoperative, what kind of a drug we use? And postoperative, what kind of a drug we use? If we... Remember from your notes before surgery. Before surgery, we use phenoxybenzamine. Before surgery, we use phenoxybenzamine. Intraoperative, we use IV phentolamine. And postoperative, we use alpha plus beta blocker labetalol. Okay, guys, we use labetalol. Okay, so what was question asking? Which of the following drug is given prior to the surgery? They don't have even mentioned the drug. They mentioned the class of the drug. Okay, so before surgery, guys, we use a phenoxy benzamine, which is a alpha adrenergic blocker. Okay, beta blockers, we don't use phosphodiesterase inhibitors. We don't use in this condition. We have a different class of phosphodiesterase inhibitors. One, two, three, four, five. Like four we use in COPDs, five we use in erectile dysfunction. Okay. Sedinafil, Tadalafil, 
Okay, and the previous question was asked that which of the following is the longest fossil rice race fight inhibitor, Tadalafil. So this time the question was on pheochromocytoma and which of the following class of the drug we use prior to the surgery. So before the surgery, we use phenoxybenzamine, which is an alpha adrenergic blocker. Okay, guys. Now the next question, a pregnant lady with 32 weeks of pregnancy with a BP more than 140 by 90, pedal edema present, dipstick 2 plus, what would be the condition? Okay, so guys, if you have remember the definition of the eclampsia and the preeclampsia and the hypertension in pregnancy, when we can say that the, there is a pregnancy, there is a hypertension in a pregnancy when the BP is more than 140 by 90, BP is more than 140 by 90, Two occasions, in two occasions, six hours apart. Six hours apart. This is this is one we can say there is a hypertension in pregnancy. Now, guys, if and it should be more than 20 weeks onwards in a normal tensive woman, more than 20 weeks. Now, if we have BP more than 140 by 90 plus proteinuria plus proteinuria. How much should be the proteinuria, guys? It should be more than 300 mg per 24 hours urine or more than one death stick urine. So we can say it is a preeclampsia. We can say it is a preeclampsia. And if preeclampsia, if preeclampsia plus, plus convulsions will be there, plus convulsions will be there, we call it as eclampsia. We call that as eclampsia. Okay, guys, so the question was, a pregnant lady with a 32 weeks of pregnancy, BP more than 140 by 90, pedal edema, dipstick, urine 2 plus, what would be the condition, guys? It would be pre-eclampsia. Okay, the answer will be pre-eclampsia, okay? In abruption, abruptio placenta, the patient will complain of a tender uterus, heavy bleeding. In PPH, it will be after the delivery, postpartum hemorrhage. And in placenta previa, again, the patient will complain of the bleeding. Okay. So, this question, the answer to this question was preeclampsia. Okay. So, I will add a bit more in this question. So, what is the reason of this pregnancy induced hypertension due to the incomplete trophoblastic invasion? Maybe next time, the students that are going to appear in the December, if they will ask what is the pathophysiology behind the hypertension in pregnancy, just remember due to the incomplete trophoblastic invasion. Okay. Now, next question. So, the answer of the previous question was preeclampsia C. The next question was pregnant woman at 32 weeks of pregnancy comes to emergency with a severe pain, abdomen, bleeding. On examination, there is a tender uterus. Fetal heart rate is absent. What could be the diagnosis? Okay, guys. So, uh, some students were saying, sir, it was also mentioned that fetus was not palpable. Fetus was not palpable. Fetus was not palpable. So, guys, this is a classical case of a aberruption placenta. Okay. Always we have studied in the placenta chapters that uh, painful bleeding with a tender uterus, fetal heart rate is absent. The answer is an abruptio placenta. Guys, in placenta previa, there will be painless bleeding. There will be pain less bleeding in a rupture uterus guys the fetus will be palpable okay fetus is palpable in this condition fetus is palpable because the fetus will be in the abdominal cavity you can easily palpate the fetus but in abruptio placenta the fetus is not palpable there is a painful bleeding there is a painful bleeding or tender uterus we also call it as covilier uterus covilier uterus or bruised uterus will be there in abruptio placenta and it is due to the increased blood pressure or trauma okay and then even in the abruptio placenta we have different types concealed and revealed so we'll not discuss right now so abruptio placenta was the answer for this condition and the polyhydromyos is the condition when the afi is more than 25 okay so the answer to this question was b abruptio placenta so the patient was complaining of the severe pain abdomen bleeding 
and a tender uterus. Okay. And remember, placenta previa always comes with a painless bleeding. One more question was there. I have, I have not mentioned that. That was the induction of labor is not done in which of the following condition. Again, for that question, the answer was complete placenta previa. Because in abruptio placenta, we go for the normal vaginal delivery with the help of an artificial rupture of membranes. And gestational hypertension, we can also go induce the labor. Okay. So in complete placenta previa, we go for the cesarean section. Okay. So guys, next question was a female patient a female patient with a history of postpartum hemorrhage was treated with oxytocin and ergometrin, but couldn't stop the bleeding. Which of the following is a prostaglandin derivative that can be used in this patient? So we all know guys, the postpartum hemorrhage after the delivery, the primary within 24 hours and the secondary after 24 hours. And the PPH, you have already studied about the four T's, tissue, trauma, tone, and Thrombin deficiency. Now, guys, if we talk about the drug of choice, the drug of the prophylactic drug of choice is oxytocin, and drug of choice is also as oxytocin. Then the second drug that we use in this condition is a methyl ergometrin or ergometrin. But the for last time in NEET PG, they asked the contraindication. They asked the contraindication for this ergometrin is a heart diseases, heart diseases, pregnancy induced hypertension. RH isoimmunization. Okay. So these were the contraindications of the ergometrin. Now, guys, even after using these drugs, the bleeding is not stopped. Okay. So what will be the next drug that we use, guys? The next drug that we'll use is carboprost. The next drug, guys, that we use is carboprost, which is PGF2. Okay, guys, the next drug that we use is carboprost. Guys, we can also use mesoprostol, but we use that 1000 microgram per rectum but here i would go with the carboprost because we can use injectable drug and uh, we use in 0.25 mg and maximum of eight doses so this was again a question asked in the recent uh, need pg exams i saw the recall that what is the maximum dosage of the carboprost so 0.25 mg we can give in one dose and we can give maximum of eight doses so the answer was 2 mg the answer was 2 mg. So the guys, here I will go with the carboprost, PGF2, okay, injectable drug. Alprostadil, guys, we use in uh, patent ductus arteriosus to maintain the patency. Also, this alprostadil is a drug of choice for tetralogy of phallic. This is also a drug of choice of tetralogy of phallic. Okay, guys, dinoprost, guys, dinoprost, we use in the induction of the labor, dinogel we use to induce the labor. Okay, guys, induce the labor. So the answer to this question was carboprost. Okay. Now in which week, in which week the diabetic screening is done in a pregnant woman? So guys, if you remember the definition of the GDM, GDM gets onward 24 weeks or beyond. Okay, gestational library is And actually what it occurs, if you remember, it occurs due to Human place placental lactogen and estrogen. Okay, guys, because that they have insulinase like they have insulinase like action. They have insulinase like action. Okay, and causing the increase insulin resistance. Increase insulin resistance, which will further result in increase blood sugars. So guys, and in pregnancy, we go with the test, one step test, one step test by giving 75 grams of sugar, then calculating the levels in the same time, one hour and two hour. Okay. So the diabetic screening, I've already mentioned in my slides, tiny slides that the diabetic screening, we go after 24 weeks onwards. Okay, guys. So the answer to this question is 24 to 20 eight weeks then complications that baby can have a macrosomic baby more than four kg then we have chances of a shoulder dystocia then the manuals that we have studied all okay so the answer to this question is 24 to 28 weeks the next question a patient of chronic alcoholism presents with the symptoms of confusion of thalmoplegia ataxia deficiency of the which of the following is likely cause. So guys, you have studied already that uh, in PSM, in PSM, if you have studied PSM from my slides, I've already mentioned that the P, the uh, mnemonic for the vitamin B1 deficiency or 
Vernix encephalopathy is GOVA, that is global confusion. Global confusion. Ophthalmoplegia. Ophthalmoplegia and ataxia. Okay, guys. So these are the three classical symptoms of the acute vernix, vernix and cephalopathy. Okay, and it occurs due to the deficiency of vitamin B1. Okay, guys. Also, the another thing that can happen is Korsakoff's syndrome. But the uh, the they would have mentioned or uh, like uh, symptoms as confabulation, confabulation or amnesia, retrograde amnesia. So guys, the answer to this question is vitamin B1, which cause, normally it causes beriberi, but in alcoholics, it causes Wernicke's encephalopathy or Korsakoff syndrome. So vitamin D will cause rickets and osteomalacia. B12 will cause a megaloblastic anemia. Also B9 causes megaloblastic anemia and vitamin C will cause scurvy and delayed wound healing, guys. Okay, so the answer to this question was vitamin B1. Now, guys, a patient treated for leprosy developed type 2 lepra reaction. Identify the type of hypersensitivity reaction. Already discussed in the lepramin test, guys, we use the rule of 5 here. Rule of 5. Okay. So, if it's a type 2 lepra reaction, I, I told you guys that will be type 3 hypersensitivity. 2 plus 3 is 5. And if it would have been type 1 lepra reaction, then it's the type 4 lepra Type 4 hypersensitivity would have been the answer. So the simple one, a patient treated for the leprosy developed type 2 lepra reaction. So the hypersensitive reaction, it is a rule of 5, type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. If they would have asked the type 1 lepra reaction, then the answer would have been type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. Then a 44-year-old patient with a history of HIV positive presents to OPD with the complaints of blurred vision, floaters in the left eye, fundoscopy reveals cotton wool spots and pizza pie appearance and the diagnosis of the CMV retinitis is made. So they gave you a clinical case in this question. They would have asked directly that what is the drug of choice of CMV retinitis, but they created a scenario of a HIV positive patient. And after that, opportunistic infections that take place, such as uh, pneumocystic zero AC, cryptococcal meningitis, toxoplasmosis, CMV retinitis. So here they're giving a symptoms of uh, CMV retinitis and which of the following is the most appropriate treatment for this? patients. Again, it was an easy catch for you guys. The drug of choice for CMV retinitis is Jan Cyclover. Jan Cyclover. Okay, guys, we also use, we also use a pro drug. We also use a pro drug of uh, this called as Val Jan Cyclover. Yeah, Jan Cyclover. So guys, the answer to this question was Jan Cyclover. So guys, Tenofovir, we also use in hepatitis B as well as in HIV. Tenofovir we use with a triple therapy, like we use Tenofovir, you remember, if you remember Tenofovir, we use Entracetabine, Entracetabine, and we use Doglutravir, we use Doglutravir, these are the three drugs that we use, post-exposure profile, post-exposure treatment in the HIV positive patients, guys, and in newborns, I have mentioned, we use Neverapine and Zidovidine, again, one question was on a Neverapine and Zidovidine, Cotrimoxazole, is a drug of choice for the nemocystic gyrovasi, guys. Nemocystic gyrovasi, we use cotrimoxazole as a drug of choice. It's an opportunistic infection in HIV patients, which take place when the CD4 count is less than 200. Acyclovir, we don't use here. Acyclovir, we use in like chicken pox or a herpes related conditions. Acyclovir. Okay, guys. So the answer to this question was giant cyclovir. Okay. A 70-year-old patient was brought to the OPD with the complaints of urinary hesitancy and incomplete urination. USG shows enlarged prostate gland and a residual urine volume of 130 ml. Which of the following agent is used in treatment of this patient? So guys, this is a classical case of a benign prostate hyperplasia. So in benign prostate hyperplasia, what are the drugs we use, guys? We use 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. We use 5-alpha such as finasteride. We use finasteride, deuteride. And we use alpha blockers like prazosin. Prazosin. And for the quick relief, if we talk about the quick relief, the drug we use is tamsulosin, also an alpha blocker. 
tamsulosin and prazosin we use when there is a benign prostate hyperplasia plus hypertension plus hypertension now the question was mentioning which of the following agent is used so guys calcium channel blockers we don't use ace inhibitors we don't use aldosterone receptor antagonists we don't use we use five alpha reductase inhibitors as well as alpha blockers so alpha blockers are not in the option so we'll go with the five alpha reductase inhibitor such as finasteride or deuteride so what they do guys they store the inhibit the conversion of the testosterone to the dihydrotestosterone and um, finasteride is also used in which condition guys alopecia along with the minoxidil so and uh, one more thing this 5 alpha reductase inhibitor i will mention here these actually shrink the size of the prostate they will decrease the size of the prostate okay so the dph question the answer of this question was 5 alpha reductase inhibitors okay now anthrax is which category bioterrorism again we have studied in the psm slides guys i'm not mentioning that okay whatever i taught was directly in the exams but yes topics these were the simple crack questions that were in there but some of the questions were so twisted <clears throat> that even the examiner will think twice what I, what I have asked to the students. I know the language is a bit tricky over there. I have been to this phase, but I hope every one of you got them correct somehow and you all will cross the finish line. So again, this was an easy crack A for anthrax category A. So anthrax is which category bioterrorism? If you remember from the previous slides, category A anthrax. Okay. This category is with the high mortality, high high mortality and the most common agent here is anthrax followed by the plague second most common second most common in category b we have like brucellosis brucellosis like q fever they are in the category in category c we have like c for coronavirus we have coronavirus we have hunter virus okay guys we have nipah virus they are all in the category so anthrax is which category bioterrorism it's category a okay guys category a in endemic areas where vitamin a deficiency risk factors are present calculate the prophylactic dose of the vitamin a for one to six year old baby so previous previous um previous mci jan 2023 when i took the recall there was a question that eight months old baby, eight months old baby. So how much you will give vitamin? So if you remember the dosage, if less than six months, you will give 50,000 international unit. If less than one year, you will give one lakh international units. And more than one year, will give two lakh international units. Okay, guys. So now the we know the uh, option a and option b are rule out now c and d was two lakh per year or two lakh per six months so guys we know that the first dose first dose of vitamin will give nine to twelve months and then second and to ninth dose we give every six months every six months till five years till five years so the answer to this question was two lakh per six months we give total of 17 lakh international units in nine doses okay then the first symptom will be the night blindness okay and first sign will be the conjunctival xerosis okay the most common the richest source will be halibut oil and the investigation of choice will be serum retinol levels so guys again vitamin chapters very important they are asking questions repeatedly for vitamins okay now a b c d two score includes all of the following parameters except now guys this a b c d two score is used so we can predict we can predict the conversion of transmic transient ischemic attack to stroke okay guys so with this score we can predict the conversion guys in this score we have a which is for age okay guys b blood pressure c is for the clinical features clinical features d is the duration of the symptoms d is the duration of the symptoms and another d is diabetes mellitus so guys which of the following is not a parameter the history of stroke so guys with this score, we can predict the uh, conversion of the transient ischemic attack to the stroke. So, 
A is for age, B for blood pressure, C was for clinical features, not for the history of the stroke, D is the duration of the symptoms, and another D was for the diabetes mellitus. So the answer to this question is history of stroke. So history of history of the stroke is not a parameter of a A, B, C, D, 2 score. Next question, guys. Hyperestrogenic conditions are all except. Okay. So the options were ovarian cancer, low BMI, tamoxifen, endometriosis guys ovarian cancers such as granulosa cell tumor gct in which we can find a collagen in our bodies they are the estrogen secreting they produce a lot of estrogen okay they make a lot of estrogen they make a lot of estrogen okay guys then low bmi then low bmi then the another option was tamoxifen guys tamoxifen is a drug used Tamoxifen is a drug used in breast cancer. And the side effect of this drug, again, the PYQ, the side effect of the, this drug, it causes endometrial hyperplasia. It causes endometrial hyperplasia or endometrial cancer. So again, it is in hyperestrogenic condition. Endometriosis obviously is in hyperestrogenic condition. It's in hyperestrogenic condition. So the answer of this will be low BMI. Guys, low BMI means low fat, low cholesterol means low, low androgens, and low androgens means less estrogen. So the answer to this question was low BMI. Even guys, when you have a classical case of an endometrial cancer, if you have remember that the patient will complain of the post coital bleeding along with that, there will be patient will be diabetic, hypertensive, obese. Okay. So here in that way, you can get the idea that, okay, if that will predispose to the endometrial cancer. So if there is a low BMI, what is in endometrial cancer? There is a hyperestrogenic state. Endometrium gets proliferative, proliferative, proliferative. So in this way also, you would have marked it as low BMI. Okay, guys. So the question answer to this question is low BMI. Now, guys, number of live births per thousand reproductive female reproductive female was from the 15 to 49 so number of live births per 1000 reproductive female is a general fertility rate general fertility rate if we talk about total fertility rate that is total number of live children born to a woman in her entire reproductive period okay guys grr is a total number of girl children and nrr is a total number of girl children alive till their reproductive age Okay, so the answer to this question was general fertility rate. Now, a child presenting to a clinic with a history of cuff, coryza, conjunctivitis, and fever. On examination, rash is seen which arises behind ear and spreading all over the chest, back and abdomen. What is the diagnosis? So this is a classical case of three C's. Three C's, you remember, cuff, coryza, and conjunctivitis. And this, the answer will be measles. If for the easy catch, guys, the answer is measles in this condition. Okay. And um, I heard some other question was asked on this measles period of communicability. It is four days before rash and four days after rash. If this was the question, then this is the answer, guys. Now, in papillary thyroid cancer, in papillary carcinoma thyroid, all are true except this was a repeated question I heard. One question was directly saying that serum calcitonin levels is a tumor marker for which type of thyroid cancer? That is a medullary thyroid cancer. So before, what did they used to ask in papillary carcinoma thyroid? It was all about samoma bodies and orphan anion nuclei. Samoma bodies and orphan anion nuclei. So this time they asked that in papillary carcinoma thyroid, all are true except risk of radiation is there. Yes. 90% have a good prognosis. Yes. Young individuals in 20s, yes, but associated with calcitonin, no. Calcitonin is associated with medullary thyroid carcinoma or medullary thyroid cancer. Okay, so the answer to this question is associated with calcitonin. Just after the delivery, uterus is at level of. Just after the delivery, the uterus is at level of. So guys, after the delivery, after the delivery, uterus will come down below the umbilicus below the umbilicus. So if you have studied the fundal height, I gave you a mnemonic that time, PUCS. 
that was 12, 24, and 36. P was for pubic symbiosis at 12 weeks. U was for umbilicus, upper border of umbilicus at 24 weeks, and C for sternum at 36 weeks. But if we talk lower border of umbilicus, lower border of umbilicus is 20 weeks. So the answer to this question is 20 weeks. 12 weeks, pubic symphysis, upper border of umbilicus 24 weeks, safe sternum 36 weeks and lower border of the umbilicus is 20 weeks. And after the delivery, the uterus corresponds below the umbilicus. A new drug, bedaquiline, a new drug, bedaquiline is approved for the treatment of MDRTB. What is the mechanism of action of this drug? A bit twisted question, guys. We studied the TB treatment in PSM. We studied about this drug, bedaquiline, but I have not mentioned the mechanism of action of this drug. Hope everyone got this right from the pharma point of view. So BPAL regime, we have studied HRZD, we studied and side effects of all these drugs. But this time they asked the bedaquiline mechanism of action. So guys, if we talk about DNA dependent RNA polymerase of myobacteria, this is a mechanism of action of rifampicin. Rifampicin, okay, inhibits catalase peroxidase of uh, mycobacteria. Guys, this catalase peroxidase, it helps in the activation of ethambitol. It, sorry, activation, activation of isoniazid, not ethambitol, isoniazid. Inhibits adenosine triphosphate synthase of a mycobacteria. Yes, it inhibits ATP synthase. So they gave a full form here. It inhibits the ATP synthase of the mycobacteria. This arabinosyl transferase, it is a side effect of ethambitol. Sorry, it is a mechanism of action of a ethambitol. So guys, bedaquiline is a approved treatment for MDRTB and the mechanism of action of this drug is it inhibits adenosine triphosphate synthase of mycobacteria. If we talk about DNA dependent RNA polymerase, that is for the rifampicin. Catalyst peroxidase is the enzyme it is used in the activation of the isoniazid. And if there is a mutation in this enzyme, there is an isoniazid resistance. And arabinosyl transferase, if we talk about arabinyl transferase, that is a mechanism of action of ethambitol. Okay, so the answer to this question is inhibits ATP synthase of mycobacteria okay then i'm not sure this question was there or not some saying that this was there some are saying no so the question was image of bruising on abdominal wall or a gray turner sign is seen in so it is seen in guys acute pancreatitis acute pancreatitis now if 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 in image somewhere saying that sir necrotizing fasciitis necrotizing fasciitis if the perineal skin is involved, okay, guys, in pancreatitis, acute pancreatitis, we don't have a perineal skin involved. If perineal skin was involved, if perineal skin involved, okay, guys, then the answer is necrotizing fasciitis or bulla wire there. But I was checking the couple of re uh, recalls. Uh, some questions, some of them mentioned that uh, it was a full clinical case given and uh, they have mentioned the CT was normal. If the CT was normal, then absolutely it would not have been the pancreatitis. Then you go for the necrotizing fasciitis. So this is called a greater uh, sign. Sometimes we have around the umbilicus called as Cullen sign. Cullen sign or we have Fox sign in an inguinal region. Fox sign in an inguinal region. This is a case of a pancreatitis. We also seen this Cullen sign in ectopic pregnancy or greater than sign. So the answer to that question was acute pancreatitis if given. But if the perineal skin is involved, CT was normal, bullet was there, so you will go with the or a necrosis of the skin was there, blackening of the skin, so you will go with the necrotizing fasciitis. Okay guys, portal hypertension, you will have that cap at medusa. Okay, so if perineal skin involved, black necrosis, bullet formation, necrotizing fasciitis. If not, then if the direct exact image was like this, then it will be a greater than a sign that is seen in acute pancreatitis. A thalassemia patient with a history of multiple blood transfusion was brought with a chronic iron overload. Yes, when there is a multiple tran blood transfusion, the patient will go into the iron overload, having an iron toxicity. Which of the following agents will be used for the chronic overload symptoms? Now, guys, vitamin B12 supplementation, EDTA, D penicillamine, defiroprone or desferoxamine. Desferoxamine. 
okay guys now the answer to this question again a byq is a desferoxamine or defiprone if they have mentioned oral agent guys if oral agent was there then defi defiprone was the answer if oral agent and if injectable then we know that desferoxamine d penicillamine is a copper chelator guys in copper it's a copper chelator we use in wilson disease also because there is a high copper in wilson disease so d penicillamine along with the zinc is used in the wilson disease treatment edta we use in the lead poisoning guys lead poisoning so the answer to this question is desferoxamine or deferiprone okay then which of the following agent is preferred in treatment of the benzodiazepine overdose okay benzodiazepine overdose formipizole we use in alcohol intoxication guys alcohol intoxication naloxone is for opioids naloxone is for opioids and naltrexone for the maintenance flumazenil is a answer so benzodiazepine antidote we all remember that is flumazenil okay guys folinic acid we use with methotrexate if i am not wrong methotrexate ke saath we use folinic acid so the answer to this question is flumazenil now which of the following which of the following jvp findings which of the following jvp findings is expected to be seen in a patient with muffled heart sound hypotension raised jvp favorite question of the mci guys the triad is called as bex triad the triad is called as bex triad it is seen in which condition guys cardiac tamponade it's seen in cardiac tamponade so guys so in jvp we have to remember if there is steep x and steep y that is seen in constructive pericarditis and if there is steep x and absent y that is seen in cardiac tamponade so guys the answer to this question is there is a absent y descent in cardiac tamponade so what is the answer b absent y descent so the patient was having a tried exactly muffled heart sound hypotension and raised jvp we see in a cardiac tamponade and in jvp what are the findings steep x and the absent why a group of friends planned a trip to ladakh one of them started having headache nausea dizziness and exhaustion symptoms while they were there which of the following is the best course of action for this patient okay guys so it is a diagnosis for mo acute mountain sickness i will write direct mountain sickness so guys i've repeatedly told you mountain sickness morning sickness and motion sickness guys the drug of choice for mountain sickness is acetazolamide it is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor carbonic it's a direct carbonic anhydrase inhibitor also used in glaucoma it's also used in glaucoma and head injury head injury when in head injury guys when we have a icp increase and we have active hemorrhage if there is not active hemorrhage we use mannitol but if there is active hemorrhage mannitol is contraindicated in that condition we use acetazolamide along with the glycerol okay guys scopolamine guys scopolamine is used in motion sickness motion sickness and promethazine doxylamine in the morning sickness morning sickness sumatriptan so, are the drug of choice for migraine triptans are drug of choice for migraine so the answer to this question is acetazolamide acetazolamide delayed wound healing after a minor surgery due to the deficiency of again previously discussed guys vitamin c will cause scurvy and delayed wound healing vitamin d will cause vitamin d will cause rickets rickets and osteomalacia okay guys zinc will cause zinc will cause acrodermatitis enteropathica acrodermatitis enteropathica vitamin b3 pellagra like symptoms very famous question four d's you will then remember casel neck so the answer to this question was vitamin c which causes scurvy along with delayed wound healing guys okay there was also one question on zinc i guess one more question 10 year old malnourished 10 year old malnourished baby with a low height for age and z line score is minus 2 standard deviation the status is so guys if if decrease height for age 
if decrease height for age we remember we'll go with the stunting if the question had mentioned if weight for height if decrease weight for height we'll go with the wasting okay so it was low height for age so the answer is stunting if decrease weight for height then the answer would have been wasting okay a patient came with a pain in a right iliac fossa whenever the patient is having a pain in a right iliac fossa along with the nausea vomiting the first condition in your mind is acute appendicitis or mesenteric adenitis in babies we have a recent infection they will go with the mesenteric adenitis but rif pain we mainly go with the acute appendicitis following then the investigations palpable lump in the right iliac fossa blood investigation shows increased tlc count what is the management so guys appendicular lump was a diagnosis appendicular lump was a diagnosis and we know in case of an appendicular lump we never go for an appendectomy so in that case what we do is we go for the ochsner sharon regime again in my classes guys i'm focused on this thing while teaching the regimes from uh, gynecology then i gave you guys the idea of ochsner sharon regime if you remember Okay, we studied like Pritchard's regime, Zeus Palm regime, Lancy and USP and Lancy regime for OCP. Then I told you just remember one more regime, Negro's regime, Oshner Shannon regime. Over there, I particularly told you guys appendicular lump. We never go for a appendectomy. So in that case, we go for Oshner Shannon regime. We put the patient on the NPO and start the antibiotics and start the antibiotics and then monitor twenty four in twenty four to forty hours the TLC count, WBC count will try will uh, WBC counts will investigate so that we'll see is the infection going down guys Oshner's Alvaro regime there is no Alvaro regime guys there is Alvaro score for appendicitis or called as the mantral score or mantral score guys this was the question asked in the previous MCIs that mantral scores every score is one except two guys mm, the two is for the leukocytosis and the migration or the pain for pain and leukocytosis, the score is two, rest is one. So for acute appendicitis, whenever the patient will complain of a pain, right iliac fossa along with the nausea and vomiting. So this is an appendicitis. But here it was already said there is a palpable lump. So appendicular lump, we go for the oshner sharon regime. We put the patient in an NPO, then giving antibiotics. And then we'll try to investigate the TLC counts. So if the TLC counts are decreasing, that is a progression to the, that is a good prognosis of the disease. Okay, guys remember this along with that maybe next time they can ask the signs of uh, appendicitis what are the those signs you have to remember dumpy sign rousing sign so do remember that easy catch guys direct image was given and it is a malam patti score nothing to discuss about this question in which in a patient uh, with a thyroid malignancy serum calcitonin was found to be very high Again, serum calcitonin is raised in which type of cancer, guys? Medullary thyroid cancer. Medullary thyroid cancer. A person bought two bottles of lacquer from shop and later presented with the drowsiness, attention, and blurry vision. So it is an alcohol intoxication case. Alcohol intoxication case. Alcohol intoxication case, guys. So the drug antidote will be formipizole or ethyl alcohol. Flumazenil will be for the benzodiazepines, naloxone for, for opioids, again discussed, PDTA for the lead. So guys, the answer to this question is formipizole or ethyl alcohol. Now, if the, they give the separate options of a formipizole and ethyl alcohol, then the first choose formipizole and the alternative is ethyl alcohol. Which of the following trinucleotide is repeated in Huntington's chorea? In Huntington's chorea. Now, guys, I'm getting a mixed uh, reviews for this question. Sir, this was not directly asked. There was a clinical case. So I will mention, I will discuss both the questions. So, guys, if we talk about the trinucleotide repeats, if we talk about CGG, CGG is seen in fragile X syndrome. CGG in fragile X. If we talk about CAG, that is in Huntington's chorea. Hunting, if we talk about GA, that's Friedreich ataxia. And if CTG, that's myotonic dystrophy. In which condition we have? Which type of cataract, guys? Christmas tree cataract. Okay. So if directly trinucleotide repeat in Huntington's chorea was asked, then it is CAG. Now the few students said, sir, that it was mentioned that 50 year old patient with a history of tremors, with a history of 
tremors along with the development of a cognitive and abnormal behavior emotional problems emotional problems and it was mentioned that trinucleotide repeat is CAG in a clinical case then the answer would have been Huntington's chorea Huntington's chorea Huntington's chorea would have been the answer right okay so the answer to this question is CAG. If asked the trinucleotide repeat, then CAG. Now, few students said that CAG was trinucleotide repeat was mentioned in the clinical case. So it is Huntington's chorea. Carcinogen associated with hepatocellular carcinoma. If we talk about the carcinogens, PVC, it causes angiosarcoma of liver. Angiosarcoma of liver. Also, arsenic causes angiosarcoma of liver. Thorotrast causes angiosarcoma of the liver. Aflatoxin is the answer, guys groundnut it causes aflatoxicosis and hepatocellular hepatocellular carcinoma if you have studied in psm i have studied the food adulteration diseases latherism with the boa toxins in aflatoxicosis we studied aflatoxin from the groundnuts and uh, asperges flavors and it causes hepatocellular carcinoma. Asbestos exposure will cause mesothelioma, guys. It will cause mesothelioma along with bronchiogenic carcinoma. Along with bronchiogenic carcinoma. Benzidine will cause bladder cancer. Benzidine will cause bladder cancer or aniline dye also. Aniline dye or benzidine will cause bladder cancer. Asbestos will cause mesothelioma. And aflatoxin is the answer which causes the hepatocellular carcinoma or aflatoxicosis. Okay. Now, a female patient present with a five days after her delivery with the symptoms of low mood irritability and decreased sleep. These are the transient symptoms, guys. These are the transient symptoms and the duration is five days given. So, it is a postpartum blues. If it would have been a depression, guys, they would have mentioned the uh, suicidal thoughts as symptoms suicidal thoughts or anhedonia that no desire from the previously desired things for example if you are getting a pleasure from the previous things now you are not able to get the desire that is called as anhedonia and that is a symptom of a depression so guys here by the transient symptoms it will go with the postpartum blues postpartum psychosis will have like hallucinations delusion okay so these were the symptoms low mood irritability decreased sleep you will go with the postpartum blues which of the following is a drug of choice for facial nerve palsy or the Bell's palsy? If they mention directly question, guys, we give the steroid, prednisolone. No. Pred no alone. Acyclovir we use when later on we have that Ramsey Hunt syndrome due to the herpes. But here, facial nerve palsy, Bell's palsy, prednisolone. No goal for MMR as per sustainable developmental goal. As per sustainable development goal. That is less than 70 per 1 lakh. Okay, the answer is C, less than 70 per 1 lakh. If we talk about the current MMR, if we talk about the current MMR, we have 97. Again, one question was there, what is the direct cause of um, MR? Direct, we know it's hemorrhage, PPH. Indirect, it is anemia. Now, few are saying that direct was there, some are saying indirect was there. So, the answer to this question is MMR. 97 so if direct then hemorrhage or pph if indirect then anemia okay guys so guys keep calm and hope the results will be good and uh, i hope that uh, all of you got most of the questions correct so there might be a bit uh, difference in the language of the question so can't match the exact level so for now just relax chill and i hope every one of you will pass and i will welcome you to this site so good luck ahead guys we'll soon come with a part two recall questions i hope the session is important enough and uh, it will be useful enough for the students will be coming for the upcoming december exams okay guys good luck all the best